Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be unboxing and demoing this giant float mount 10 inch JVC doubled in car stereo. Now, in this unboxing, we're going to show you everything that's included within the box. We're going to get everything assembled on the bench, throw some power at it, and show you all the features that it includes. Let's get started. Now, before we jump into things and the box here, a couple of things to note. Huge shout out to JVC Kenwood for sending this unit on over, helping us celebrate our 100,000 subscriber milestone here on the channel. A couple of things to note specifically on the box itself. It is Wi-Fi certified, which means it has an onboard Wi-Fi chip supporting Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It uses Wi-Fi to stream that type of content onto the screen and uses Bluetooth to authenticate that type of connection. This Wi-Fi isn't used to browse the internet or anything like that. It's more so to support that wireless connection between the radio and your phone. It also has onboard HDMI, which is an awesome feature to have. And on top of that, it has that giant 10 inch screen but still accommodates a double den style chassis which allows you to basically use any sort of double den dash kit that's specific to your vehicle with all that being said let's go ahead and dive into the box to show you everything that it comes with all right so with everything pulled out of the box it gives you a really good idea everything that's included uh, within the radio kit you have down below here, there's a lot of different odds and ends, like the mounting hardware and screws for the screen and doubled in chassis itself, USB cable extension, main wiring harness adapter, GPS antenna and mounting plate, universal steering wheel remote harness, Bluetooth mic, full manual and warranty information, and finally, all the trim pieces for the screen once the screen is mounted to the chassis. Now what we'll do is link a lot of the information and items included within the box here in the description of the video in case you wanna see it a little bit more in depth. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the doubled in chassis and screen, and let's get everything assembled here on the bench so we can boot it up for you for the first time. All right, so let's take a closer look at the doubled in chassis itself. This is this is indeed the radio where the screen is only displaying what the radio is producing. Here on the front, we have a little bit of branding for features included with this radio. We do have a blank in case this did offer some sort of onboard navigation. There's an SD card slot, but it's not used on this specific model. We have two covers here, which allow you uh, more access to different uh, adjustments to the bracket itself where you can adjust that up, down, in and out depending on your application and how you're mounting this specifically within your vehicle here. There's a lot of mounting here and basically the screen will connect there using the hardware provided uh, by the Kenwood accessory kit. Here on the side of the radio, like mentioned before, it is a standard doubled in size radio, depth wise and height wise, about four inches tall. So like mentioned before, this will fit most, if not all standard doubled in dash kits on the market for your specific year make and model vehicle. All right, so here on the back of the unit, there's a ton of ports to make your connections. And we're gonna walk you through everything here on the back of the chassis so you can get it set up properly within your vehicle. Starting on the left-hand corner, we have three short video dongles. We have a rear camera input, a front camera input, and a third view camera input, often used specifically on vehicles that have, for example, uh, mirror monitors or a cargo monitor or something like that. You can display that within those ports. Additionally, we have two longer dongles here. One's gonna be a video in and a video output. The video in also can be reconfigurable as a fourth camera input if needed. We have a USB input as well and the included three foot extension cable so you can reroute that port to wherever location you choose to see fit. Looking a little closer here, we have a remote in, which is newer for JVC Kenwood. Uh, essentially here, this is for the universal analog input here uh, for steering wheel volume controls using the included adapter. 
Most instances, you'll most likely use a steering wheel control module that's included with your wiring harness adapter, um, but they do include a universal analog harness as well. Next to that, we have our GPS antenna input. Again, this unit does not have native onboard GPS. It's specifically for location accuracy while using Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both wired and wireless. To the right of that, we have a mini 3.5 millimeter jack specifically for AV input. Now, now you do need an AV input adapter which we can link down below which essentially converts this mini style 3.5 aux looking jack into a composite video left and right RCA input. Up underneath this little ledge here we have two additional ports. We have a mic input as well as an AV audio output. Uh, in the event you are using the video output you want audio with it, for example, like an external screen that's mounted in the back. You can have dedicated audio going to that screen in a dual zone format. So you can play audio differently out to rear speakers or headset monitors than you do up front with the driver and passenger side. Next here we have our AM FM Motorola style antenna input. And then three sets of pre-outs for external amplifiers. We have a subwoofer, a front and a rear. All are five volts. And then on the right hand side, we have a few additional ports. Down here is our main harness connection, which is used with that main harness adapter in the box. That's where you're gonna make most of your main connections for power ground, speaker connections and so forth. Right above that is our iDatalink Maestro input port if you use the iDatalink Maestro install kit, depending on the year make and model vehicle. This allows you to bring more data features into your radio from the vehicle like tire pressure sensors, vehicle engine analytics and data, heating and air controls, so on and so forth. And then there's an associated aux input for that iDatalink input in case you have uh, backup chimes or any sort of audio alert over the factory sound system that can be brought in through that port. Top right hand corner, deep in there, there's an actual standard size HDMI input. Um, you basically take this cover off and use a standard size HDMI cable to plug into that. And then this little cover comes back on to give that cable some support. Last port here is the Sirius XM satellite radio port, uh, which you can actually add to this radio with the XM radio adapter, which we can link that adapter and tuner down in the description. So at this point of time, let's go ahead and put some power on this radio so we can get this booted up to show you the user interface as well as wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Okay, let's go ahead and simulate turning on the vehicle. All right, so with the unit booted up, this is the initial setup menu where you can adjust the clock, language, display, uh, illumination color. You can set up the camera, whether you have a factory or aftermarket camera, you wanna set that up. Finally, you have OEM setup and demo. Uh, OEM setup generally is used with the iDatalink Maestro wiring harness and module for applicable vehicles. That's where you can set those up. Hit finish when you're good to go here. Once you hit agree, it's gonna take you to the main menu. And what's cool about this, it immediately presents you with the advanced gesture touch control. Very similar to like a smartphone or an iPad, allows you to use different gesture features to control the unit. Uh, which is not traditional on most touchscreen units on the market today. It's really nice to be able to use this. So you can change widgets, format, styles. Um, you can easily turn up the volume by clockwise or counterclockwise there, just with one finger. Then you can do two fingers to the right. Essentially here, it's gonna take you through different views here on the home screen, where you can go through different sources, different viewpoints here on the home screen itself. Here on the left hand side, you have your main sources here, CarPlay, Android Auto, you have your Bluetooth phone and your all sources menu. Go ahead and hit that. And essentially here, it's gonna give you an easy access to all those sources, HD radio, wireless mirroring, Bluetooth audio, USB, iPod, HDMI, AVN, Sirius XM, which again, like mentioned before, you need the tuner for, and then the AV off, swipe to the right. These are the additional sources that are only available through the iDatalink module 
accessory control, vehicle info, satellite radio, media player. Again, not at the moment, they're not present and available because those sources are not in use. You can add on the available radar detector, gauges, climate, and parking assist. Again, are through the iDataLink Maestro kit. Now we can quickly jump to our settings icon. And again, it's gonna give you a whole list of settings through setup and audio control here at the top, similar to your initial setup menu that we saw when we first turned on the unit. Now here are our basic setup menu. There's a ton of different options to set up for your unit. These are all connections and AV. You can set different gain levels for microphone, echo, and noise control. AV out, you can select that AV output from the unit depending on which input you want to send to that output. And then under the audio setting, you have a ton of different audio adjustments. You can set the car type here, your speaker size, the location of the speaker, the size of the speaker, listening positions. You have your equalizer, your subwoofer level control. Down below, you have those presets, so you can quickly jump to those. And as you'll notice, as you go through these, you can set them up specifically for different sources, or you can apply this EQ across all sources of the unit. Currently, we're on wireless mirroring, but again, like I said, you hit that all source, and this EQ setting will apply to all different sources. Under balance and fade, you have your uh, adjustment there. You can do the single zone or dual zone. Like mentioned before, this is a really nice feature, especially if you're playing sources in multiple areas of the vehicle. Uh, for example, the front passengers want to use CarPlay, but the rear passengers uh, want to watch a movie and want to hear the audio. You can set up dual zone and you can set what the front source is listening to and what the rear source will listen to. Um, and you can control that simply from the settings menu here. And you have a different volume adjustment for that rear source. So you can turn that up or down differently from the front speakers. Volume offset, sometimes different sources will have different audio levels. This allows you the opportunity to adjust those and really dial that in so each source sounds the same. Sound effect, essentially here this menu is all for your audio quality. Go through, set up your bass boost, loudness, parametric EQ, space enhancement, everything like that. And finally, audio memory, if you've gone through and set up all this and spent time it's nice to save that just in case you reset the unit or have to power cycle the unit. You don't lose all of those settings. Display and button function. You can go through and set up your dimmer, your clock, illumination, wallpaper customization, and touchscreen effect here. Again, similar options that you saw at the very beginning through the initial setup menu. Set the different key colors there at the bottom to match the OEM colors of your dash. You can customize your wallpaper just like an iPhone or an Android. You can have a live wallpaper, which is really unique, or a static wallpaper as well. Under user interface, you can set and turn on and off different sources under the source setup menu. All you have to do is click on that and you can cycle those on or off depending on your needs. You can turn your beep on or off. You can turn on or off the gesture touch control effect as well. You have other sources that are unavailable depending on your adapters. Under your camera setup menu, you can go back in, make any adjustments to the camera as needed like the initial setup menu. Under the system settings, again, you can turn demo on or off and other information as needed. And finally here, that function button is really nice. It allows you to go through and customize your quick jump setup menu where you can jump to different settings or sources by use of that function button. So that's about it for this quick walkthrough of this screen. The last thing we want to show you is indeed wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. And in today's demonstration, we're going to actually just show you how to use wireless CarPlay as the technique for Android Auto will be identical, uh, but we have an iPhone here today. So let's go ahead and get that. All right, set so up. let's go ahead and show you how to connect. Uh, we have USB connected to the back of the unit. At this point, we're going to plug in via USB. It automatically pulls us up to CarPlay. Um, the nice thing is about wired CarPlay or wired Android Auto, you don't need to pair anything. It's instantaneous over a wired connection. But when we plug in our phone, it does give us um, the option to allow wireless CarPlay or using CarPlay while your phone is locked. So we'll hit allow there. 
what we're gonna do is go to our settings and we're gonna pair our phone to this unit over Bluetooth. So we'll go to our Bluetooth menu here. Bluetooth is on. We're gonna go to device list. We're gonna add a device, okay? We're gonna see it on our other devices. So we're gonna click on the model number there. We'll hit pair, hit pair, yes, yes, yes. We're gonna hit allow. So this device is available for wireless CarPlay. So once we hit allow on this unit, be sure the GPS antenna is hooked up in order for you to enable wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Again, it needs that GPS antenna for location accuracy here. With those connections now made, and at this point of time, we have enabled our wireless CarPlay feature. And so at this point of time, it actually uses Wi-Fi to use that. Now, when you know you're on wireless CarPlay, you actually have a battery indicator there. Um, wired CarPlay, you wouldn't have a battery indicator. It's an easy one to tell. So there is our main home screen here. All working great. All right, so that's about it for this unboxing and demo here. We obviously didn't cover all the features of this unit here. There's just so much built in to this floating 10 inch screen. Um, but you're welcome to check out all the details that we'll link in the description of the video here for you. If you also want to see this unit installed, we're going to be putting this in a Dodge Sprinter van. So check that video on out. You can see us get it set up from start to finish uh, and get it soldered up to a harness and mounted up into a dash kit. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you liked what you saw and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. We will see you in the next video.